Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Thought we'd do this little quick video in my backyard. Cutting down some trees along the fence line. Not trees but bushes. Really opened up the view. I'm still doing a lot of work back here. Uh, trying to get it in order before it's winter time and everything's just going to stay put. And I got to wait till spring. But uh, just want to do a quick video. I've got people that are come through now and they keep changing their words. Um, just to help just to help you brothers and sisters in Christ uh, when it comes to they tell you they used to say faith alone I mean I'm gonna have to probably start blocking some people brothers and sisters in Christ I don't want servants of Satan coming onto the channel and I've talked to them I've preached absolute truth to them they keep coming on with their feelings and opinions they'll ex ignore, ignore scripture and not compare scripture with scripture and they're trying to create false converts they're trying to screw up Christians that are already saved and they're trying to create false converts. So I'm going to have to probably, I haven't blocked people in a while. Uh, I think I blocked uh, two people before in the past. But, this, you know, I'm, I don't really block people. But I'm probably going to have to start. But I wanted to help you, brothers and sisters in Christ. They'll come out and they'll say faith alone. Now they're saying it's uh, grace alone by faith alone. Now they're throwing in the word through, but they don't truly believe in the word through. And we've talked about this, but I'd like to go through it with you again, brothers and sisters of Christ. When they go to attack you and say, it's faith alone, or it's grace alone, by faith alone, or if they actually quote Ephesians, which we're going to do, 2.8, where it says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. See, it's grace alone through faith alone. Ask them what that through means. What is salvation? The definition of salvation is God's grace, God saving man by his grace. That's always what salvation has been throughout the whole Bible, is God saving man by his grace. So let's go through Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, through faith. What's the through part? The through is what they hate, and the faith part, it's not really faith, it's belief. Only belief. It's not the fullness of faith that Ephesians 8 and 9 is talking about. And not, not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you ask them, what does that through mean? And then we go to show them what the Bible teaches that through means. Okay? Through faith. You have to go through faith to find God's grace. I believe Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 is absolute truth. Do you, brothers and sisters of Christ? The enemies out there don't. Okay? Through faith. So if you go to 2 Corinthians 7.10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Uh, Ephesians 2.8 says it's just through faith. But 2 Corinthians 7.10 says you have to go through repentance to find God's grace. Is that a contradiction? No, it's not. Because it takes faith to repent. That's what the word through means. And you hit them up with this. Okay. Uh, Romans 1.16 okay. for, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Okay, It says unto salvation. The gospel, the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, leads to God's grace. And they'll jump up and down, belief, only believe, only believe, it's only belief. I mean, faith alone. No, what they're really saying is only belief. You break it down and you talk with them, it's just belief. They believe in a false Jesus. We've been doing all these teachings, brothers and sisters of Christ, and it's all about believing in a false Jesus. But it's only belief. It's not faith alone, they're lying to you. It's belief alone is what they really teach. Okay? They take repentance out, say, what does through faith mean? It says, through faith. You're not saved by your faith. It's not faith alone, as the Bible says. You're adding to Scripture. The tree just fell down. You're adding to Scripture. We just had rain and wind. Um, you're adding to Scripture when you say faith alone. Okay? You're saved by God's grace. Next, um, Romans 10.10. 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What do you do with that? If it's just belief, because that's what they're really saying, it's only belief, then when you do that, it says you have to have a confession of some kind before you get God's grace. Bef 
for salvation. And what's that confession? You're confessing your repentance and your belief to show that you are not ashamed. What, how do they deal with it? I'll tell you in a second why, how they deal with it. But you hit them with this, and maybe, just maybe, someone is being a parrot, what I call PWC, and they're just parroting what someone taught them, and maybe their heart hasn't been hardened. Maybe they're not, you know, we can reach them, but with truth, with the Bible. Okay. So hit these people up with this. Uh, Romans 10, 13. I mean, if someone's got a so-called ministry, vehicle going by. We're out in the boonies, but I, part of the road goes through my um, property, which is the throughway, I think that's what it's called, um, where I have to have the road maintained for my thing. And of course, they decide to stop right there. We're going to try to keep going. Romans 10, 13, okay, you're to ask, that's what we, I, I got ahead of myself, confession. It says, to, unto salvation. Repentance part, maybe I screwed up, it says to, I always sometimes say unto. Um, 2 Corinthians 7, 10. But Romans 10, 10 says, confession is made unto salvation. It comes before you get God's grace. Yet you go back to Ephesians 2, 8, it says through faith. God, you're saved by God's grace through faith. Faith, in that context, faith has three parts. Repentance, belief, and confession. Three parts, brothers and sisters in Christ. What do they do with this? Before we go on to the asking and uh, the new creature in Christ Jesus, you know how they can do away with this? They'll ignore 2 Corinthians 7.10. They can't claim it's in Romans because they're trying their best. They do away with the belief and confession. I mean, they keep the belief that's in Romans 1.16, but the confession that's in Romans 10, 10, they throw it out. Well, that's not for us today. So what do they do? They, got, they have to get rid of God's word. They have to do away with it. So these people are ignoring scripture and hoping maybe if I ignore it, it doesn't exist. Kind of like the lost world does. If I ignore this book, maybe it doesn't exist. Well, you keep doing that and see how that works. Okay? How does that work out for you when you stand before Jesus at the great white throne? Okay. So that's the through part, and then what it's uh, in Ephesians 8 9, where it talks about it is a gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift. They turn faith into their belief, that's what they're turning into works. They've earned salvation with their belief. Okay, I'm, I'm realizing now that it's not that they believe in faith, it's the belief. You can believe in vain, you know, 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4. It's a belief, and it's in vain because they're believing in the wrong Jesus Christ. An, an antichrist, a counterfeit, is who they believe in. So Romans 10, 13, you ask God to save you, okay? Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Why? Because you prove that it's a gift. And then, I didn't write this down, but Brother J.T. in his book, it was amazing. I love that, he, that God showed him that. The woman at the well, Jacob's well, Samaria, uh, Jesus telling her that if thou knew who asked thee of water, Thou would have asked me for the gift of God. Ask for the gift of God. It's something you ask for. You don't just sit there and go, I automatically get it. I believed in my head, I automatically get it. No, the gift of God is something you ask for. Okay? You call upon the name of the Lord and ask Him. That's in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. I'm realizing Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 basically has all the steps of the gospel, the plan of salvation, on out to after salvation, now you're saved. We'll get to that. It's actually the next thing. 2 Corinthians 5.17 A uh, new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What is uh, Ephesians 2.10? They never like to quote 2.10. They'll say 8 and 9, 8 and 9, 8 and 9, and they will ignore 10. Why is that? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You're created in Christ Jesus and the good works change life. Believe it or not, 2, 8, and 9, to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, back up are what we teach from the Bible, the plan of salvation, the true gospel, the true plan of salvation. Repentance leads to belief. Belief leads to conf 
confessing both your repentance and belief in prayer, and after the confession, it leads to saying, God, I don't deserve it. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please save me. You ask God to save you. They all go in order. You cannot skip one. Okay? You can't skip one and jump around. It all goes in order. Okay? So when they say through faith, ask them, what's that through for? Through faith. It says that something happens before salvation, God's grace. For God will save you with His grace. What's that through for? What does that through mean when it says through faith? Well, come on, what does it mean? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can you see repentance? Who you're confessing to God and having godly sorrow to, can you see Him? Can you see God? When I confessed, I couldn't see God. I had to have faith that He could hear me and He could see my heart. I came to Him broken. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They'll gladly say that takes faith. But it still has to happen in the heart. Confessing. You're confessing your repentance and your belief to a God you cannot see. That takes faith. And then for it to be a gift, you have to ask for it. Okay. It's a gift. God saved me. So I just wanted to make a really quick video. I'm, I'm talking to a lot... A lot of guys are attacking me, and I kind of quote scripture after scripture after scripture to them, and they're coming back with feelings and opinions, or they'll throw one or two verses at me, and they'll ignore lots of scripture. So, brothers and sisters, I might have to start blocking some people that keep coming on, and they're clearly lost and on their way to hell. And like we've been talking about in First and Second Corinthians, you have these wolves in sheep's clothing coming in, and it's all about creating false converts and messing up those who are saved getting them really messed up. And I don't want the brothers and sisters of Christ to get messed up, and I definitely don't want people to get led into a false sense of salvation. Because once someone believes they're saved, they're so hard to deal with to say, hey, you've been deceived by a counterfeit Jesus. This so-called faith alone, which is actually belief alone, uh, it's going to damn you to hell. Okay? You cannot earn salvation. It's a gift. Right? And like I said, they keep coming up with new ways to say it and to twist it and everything. And they're doing it like a serpent. As the serpent beguiled Eve. They start preaching a different Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. They're trying to be subtle and they're twisting words around, brothers and sisters in Christ. So if you come across somebody that seems like they're doing a false ministry, you already know them, they attack the true gospel, they've been told a million times, ignore them. Preach the gospel, move on. If you come across somebody that seems like, you know, that you might be able to get to them by their questions and what they're saying, do you think there might be hope? Um, that there might be hope, then, you know, hit them up with the stuff that we just talked about and said, hey, is this what you really went through? The plan of salvation that's found in the King James Bible, or were you misled? I was misled for most of my life. So... Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus. I'm still trying to stick with the ministry, but... I mean, no buts, because that negates the... I love the ministry that God's let me be a part of, His ministry. And I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. The last four or five days I've been hitting hardcore this backyard. And I'm having to haul tons of, like, pea gravel to the backyard. I've got all these bricks. I've had to transfer a lot of the plants over to some of the new raised flower beds because some of the old flower beds I did wrong the first time. So you learn from your mistakes and just moving stuff around. So I really want to get two fruit trees back here. I really want some fruit trees back here. Um, so, and I got people coming to cut a tree down and that's really going to hurt. Um, trees leaning towards the yard and leaning towards the house and it, it's when we had the fire I didn't have it cut down and uh, the fire that came through I don't know if a lot of you brothers and sisters haven't been following me long enough some of the old videos I mentioned it had a huge fire come through here forest fire and it was like four miles away um, but yeah there's still a lot to get done before the rain and I'm just praying the Lord helps me get everything done I uh, got some wood and there was a pl there's a plan to build a uh, chicken coop, but I don't know if I'll get to it this uh, this time before winter starts. I just want to be able to spend winter doing Bible studies, 
going over Bible studies, uh, spending as much time I can with the Lord and maybe more time with the brother, sister in Christ, emailing back and forth more. Like I said, I've just been spending most of the day doing bricks back here and moving dirt and uh, spending time with the Lord every second I can every day, including, like I always tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever you're doing, this backyard, I'm still talking with the Lord and giving Him thanks in everything. All it worked, thank you, Lord. All that didn't work, well, Lord, can you help me, please, to get it to work or find, help me find a way that will work? You know, you talk with the Lord and everything, give Him glory and give Him thanks in all things. So, I will see you guys in the next video.